next 45 minutes, um, we'll go on a dive, uh, on a diving session, on a virtual diving session. And no, I'm not talking about virtual reality. Um, it's like kind of a deep dive um, session. We'll start shallow, go deeper, deeper, deeper into the depth of the Wicked SDK where no one has ever been except for one of our engineers. Um, and uh, try to get a sense of what the Wicked SDK can do for you. It's quite cool to see so many developers um, because it's actually you who are going to build this next step of AR applications and VR applications. Who am I? Um, as I've been introduced, I'm, my name is Philipp Nagele. I'm Austrian, uh, currently CTO of Wikitude and have been that for, or have been at the uh, company for quite some time. Um, we'll talk a little bit about the architecture of the Wikitude SDK, how it's built up, again, for you to understand where we come from, and then look into two features in more detail, particularly the JavaScript API and the plugins API. So who is Wikitude? Um, we could do this both. It's uh, a kind of well-known name for an app, um, and it's also the name of our company. Um, it has been founded in 2008, 2009 is the official date, but the initial idea came 2008, when our founder had an idea about why not display points of interest and monuments in a camera. And um, he did that um, and tried a prototype, and out of that, out of that the Wikitude app was born and I'll show you later on. Currently, we're powering more than 10,000, 15,000, 20,000, it depends on the reading uh, apps uh, with the Wikidit SDK. Um, we're heavily working on 3D tracking technologies, and you can see some of our current customers um, and partners uh, below. We're based in the beautiful city of Salzburg, uh, right in the middle of Europe and Austria. And uh, I'd like to ask you, the audience, what do you associate with Salzburg? Others from, others from Austria are, are not allowed to answer. <laughs> so give me, shout, shout out some, some names. What, is, what do you think about music? Sound of music, great, yeah. I need to have three minimum. What, who, who's, who's that, Mozart? Mozart? Mozart, and? Something else? Chocolate. Chocolate, usually at that stage Red Bull comes. So who's, who's at Mozart? Okay, uh, because I have some candies. Um, Mozart Kugeln, I don't translate that into English. Um, and um, yeah, I'm probably I'm better at coding than at throwing. Well, let's see. Who said Red Bull? No, and I'm not throwing cans now at you. <laughs> Um, but I have a follow-up question, which uh, where you can earn another Mozart Kugel if you'd like. Um, who can tell me what you can see here? Again, those who were at Santa Clara are not allowed to participate in that. What is it? A mobile phone. That's good. Yes, <laughs> it's not a Hololens. No. It's actually it's 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 a really important device. It's an iconic device. It, it's the very first Android phone, public phone. Um, but that doesn't give you, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, no, um, does anyone know what, what kind of, what, what the official name of that phone was? I'm kind of surprised. It's, what, what? G1. G1, it was the T-Mobile G1. You're in a, <laughs> it's anyhow dessert time. Um, yeah, exactly. Why is this important for us, for the industry? Because it was the very first Android phone. Why was it, is this important for Wiktude? Because, um, if you look very closely, the logo with the palm tree um, is the first Wikidude logo. So Wikidude took part in the very first Android Developer Challenge um, back in 2008 and was awarded under the top 50 applications. And as an, one of part of the device, it was pre-installed on the T-Mobile G1s. Um, so quite early, we, well, this was kind of the first augmented reality application on the very first Android phone. Things had changed quite dramatically after that. Um, so this kind of is a, a rough time scale for how the company changed. Um, in the first four years um, after the founding, the idea was to create an AR app, an AR browser where others can participate and distribute that to as many possible devices uh, out there. In the end, we reached about 25, 30 million devices installation base, um, but we didn't manage to base a solid business model on top of that, which would feed about 10 people. 
Um, but what we saw is that there was a term, an increasing demand for AR technology to be embedded as a white label solution into apps. Um, so for us, 2012 was really a turning point um, where we settled from B2C to a B2B company. We've grown since then to 25 people, uh, and uh, our role or our company is now a technology provider. If you look into the Google Play Store, you will find the Wikidata app. Um, but uh, for us, this is more like a, a byproduct. It's not the focus of our doing anymore. Um, it's it's a it's a pro not a prototype. It's a it's a demo uh, app that is out there, but it's not uh, the thing we're currently pushing out or pushing. Our main product is, I mean, the name of the session says it's the Wikidit SDK, um, with some additional products um, uh, at the side, um, cloud recognition service hosted in various uh, regions around the world, and creation and uh, content management system called Studio, uh, which looks into, uh, into the SDK as well, and um, management APIs and enterprise APIs, so you can work with your own CMS as well. Um, you know, if you, if you work in a B2B company, obviously you're interested in how many Bs or business and customers are using you. So we've attracted more than 100,000 developers to use the weekly technology and try it out in the recent years. And uh, although this is kind of a marketing graph, it's pretty much uh, the uh, graph that you're currently seeing. So let me quickly explain what you can do with the Wikidata SDK. And uh, I mean, you had a great talk about HoloLens before. Um, I don't know what that happened. Um, this is much more mass, mass market applications. We're looking at phones that can work with that technology with the SDK. So what you can do with the SDK is are several use cases, and I have a few images to, to illustrate that. Um, as it includes what we call a GeoAR, a sensor-based uh, augmented reality solution and technology, you can do, do stuff like this one where you, you want to have your customers understand what you're looking at on a larger distance. Or you can make your world a playground. And uh, a company, a famous co or a company just a few months and weeks ago just did that with Pokemon Go. Um, the technology behind Pokemon Go, and this will be a major part uh, afterwards, um, is, is already there to do that on your own. The Pokemon did not include Wikidata in SDK, but all technology, AR te technology that is in the Pokemon Go app is actually ready to be used in the Wikidata SDK. Or you can augment books, any 2D images, planar images, similar to what Wuforia just said. Um, this is a case from a, um, a customer in Salzburg. They have beautiful satelli satellite imagery in a book. And of course, they want to show some, some additional content on top of that as well. They, can, they cannot modify the satellite image because that would kind of destroy the beauty of the satellite image. So they turn to us um, what they can do and how can they augment and show additional content on top of that. Print ads. Um, are another or sales uh, or sales tool uh, augmenting uh, um, 3D models on top of that is another use case you can work with the Wikid SDK. Virtually mount products or interiors, I think you heard that. Maintenance is a use case that is coming up more often and often. And also remote maintenance, which um, I think is one of the we'll we'll see a lot of a lot of solutions and a lot of products uh, in that. Um, it might probably not be as seen here that someone is telling uh, someone else how to use a multimeter, uh, but maybe it is exactly that. You want to enable personnel, staff, field engineers um, with knowledge which is not normally there um, and that easily there. And there's a great, or for me, a very revealing use case from a, a partner um, out of Salzburg. They are in the, in the truck manufacturing business. So they're shipping parts for trucks. And um, of course, sometimes things just get broken. Um, they have an internal figure uh, that 80% of their repairs and the fixes could actually be done without any special tools, without any particular analyze, uh, analysis software. Um, so the truck driver itself could actually do it. What happens today is that in all of those cases, um, if the phone, if it's not like super simple, um, that they need to go to a garage or repair um, a contractor and have the truck repaired, which obviously takes quite some time. 80% um, of those repairs could actually be done in a few minutes if the person, the truck driver, just would have the knowledge just there 
and probably through the help of a remote assistant, a remote assistant could help the guy just there, 80%. And if you think of a truck repair, that usually takes three, four hours versus five minutes, I think then the business case is quite clear. The Wikidata SDK is a platform agnostic technology. Um, it runs on several device factors or device forms, um, AR glasses, smartphone tablets, and the base of it is, is, a, uh, is a, a technology core uh, written in C++, but well, we'll come to that in a minute. When I say smart glasses, the Wikidata SDK runs on Vuzix, Epson, and ODG. I think two of them are outside, which you can check out. Um, and I don't know whether the Epson has the PT300 here to um, watch, but it's a great device for high contrast. Also check out the ODG R7. It's a great device, a lot of fun. So let's look into the Wikidata SDK a little bit more. Um, the SDK comes in two flavors or two variants to work with. On one hand, the native API for Android and iOS. On the other hand, a JavaScript API um, on top of that you can work with. So you have several options to choose from. Unity is another option which is based off the native API, Titanium or Accelerator framework, um, PhoneGap and any Cordova-based uh, frameworks, and Xamarin for those who, you, who wanna program in C-sharp. Anyone familiar with those hybrid frameworks or is actually using those frameworks? Uh, probably like 20%. So the Wikidata SDK is available as a wrapper, a model, a plugin, however you wanna call it as an extension for all of those tools. You can use that right away. And as I said, from the diving, you know, we're now moving from the shallow to a little bit more deep. Um, if you look into the components of the Wikidata SDK, uh, as I said, there is a C++ layer, which is the real core engine of the Wikidata SDK. It encapsulates, encapsulates all the common um, parts which are available cross-platform. That is an OpenGL rendering. Um, those are the computer vision parts, 3D recognition engine, uh, the 2D on-device engine, and then the cloud recognition parts. Obviously not the cloud parts, the server parts, but the hooks to use those uh, services are in there. On top of that, is the native API that wraps exactly that functionality. Um, when I say OpenGL ES rendering here in the C++ part, then this is a very, very, very little part. It's just rendering the camera frame onto your application. Um, so the native API is actually, when it comes to the functionality, quite compact. Um, you can do a lot of on your own or, um, and influence a lot of, uh, of that on your own. Um, or as I said, there's a Unity plugin, which then gives you all the rendering power of Unity on top of that. In contrast, next to it sits the JavaScript API, which has a little bit more functionality. Um, and it comes with a GeoAR core, or the location-based services core, that is uh, usable through the JavaScript API as well. You can base your app on top of that, or use one of the three um, uh, hybrid frameworks um, if you feel comfortable with it. The benefit of having a JavaScript API is that you can work cross-platform and deploy the same application to Android and iOS and writing the augmented reality part just once. Next to it, uh, which we introduced um, a few months ago, is what we call the plugins API. Um, so if you wanna do particularly computer vision stuff next to it, and last but not least, a very, very, very slim layer, a very, very slim part uh, in the middle of the uh, graphic, the Java and the Objective-C native layer. That's actually by purpose because that part is really, really slim and down to the necessary. Um, so let's look at the JavaScript API um, from a Java or Android perspective. As I said, the Java part in, in the SDK is actually quite um, slim. The core part is what we call an architect view and I'd like to introduce this term architect. It's just uh, one of our internal names for the JavaScript API. So every time we talk about architect or architect world, uh, then this is referring to the JavaScript API. And uh, that's the only part or the API that you need. And the architect view itself, so experiences, AR experiences, that's it. That's kind of what you need from the architect view. Everything else is optional and it's kind of a candy you can register an architect URL listener if you want to communicate between Java and JavaScript. 
There's also an architect world load listener. And if you want to take snap uh, screenshots and snapshots, you can uh, work with the capture screen callback. So how does that all work? Um, when we talk about a JavaScript API and a C++ layer and augmentations and so on, um, the architect view is composed of two layers, if you'd like to say so. One view or one layer is an OpenGL view, um, which is controlled from the C++ layer. It does all the uh, camera rendering. It renders the augmentations. It's hooked up to the 3D engine. So all the augmentations and all the stuff that is moving is basically handled in there. On top of that, together is a web view, a regular web view you would find in Android or in iOS that loads your HTML content, you loads the JavaScript, loads CSS files. Um, the special thing about this web view is that it is transparent. So there's no background to it, there's no solid background, it just is a transparent web view. You would not recognize that there's a web view. Gluing that together and making them live together, that is the JavaScript API of Wikitude. And I was referring to architect worlds now quite often, and um, what an architect world in essence is, it is um, your augmented reality experience. So the thing the user will see and interact with. Um, we have not found yet a better name for augmented reality uh, experience. A game is a game, a website is a website, whatever it is on, in AR. Um, so an architect world consists of HTML files, JavaScript files, CSS files, so nothing very special. Um, it's just a, like a regular mobile or a regular desktop website you would write. You write it, that also um, for um, an AR experience. How you use it, you include our library um, through a regular include script or tag um, like you would do with any other library as well. However, there's one special thing about that. If you would call that URL in your browser, you probably would get a 404 or a never loading, never ending loading um, because the actual content of the file is injected through the SDK. Um, you need the SDK that those kind of websites work. Um, they will not work in the regular browser because the browser does not bring all the APIs we need or that we need to, to work um, to create AR experiences. Um, why is it not reachable? As you anyhow need the SDK, we can inject it right away and can by that uh, offer real offline apps. So every JavaScript call from the architect world, from your experience, is then actually triggering an action in the underlying C++ layer, which you have seen. And if I say that like this, this statement, this sounds like quite a lot of work, right? JavaScript call coming in, piping that through the Java layer, going to C++, back up again for callbacks, and so on and so on. So we've invested quite a lot of time to make that very efficient. This bridge between JavaScript and the C++ layer and the communication, and that is the, the key part of the Wicked SDK that this performs efficiently. Also that it can wrap um, or do quite a lot of in the C++ call without going back to the, C++, uh, to the JavaScript API again. How do you then work with the JavaScript API? So you define augmentations. Drawables is what we call the subclass. And there are several drawable types available in the SDK. Nothing very special, what you would not expect, or, or what you would expect from an AR SDK. You can work with images, you can work with videos, 3D models, you can work with HTML content, web views, and you can work with labels. Labels as a very, very basic form of, um, of an augmentation. And if you think of the SDK, or we've tried to apply kind of a model view controller pattern, an MVC pattern, um, in the SDK or in the API. So there are data models, um, geolocation, relative location, tracker, an image resource. Then there's the view representation, which is an image drawable, video drawables, AR models, so not the data models, but 3D models, labels, and then the controller, which unifies the business logic, geo object, trackable, uh, trackable 2Ds. And uh, as I just got a, like a 10 minute warning, uh, We'll rush a little bit ahead uh, because I think we have some interesting part um, still ahead of us. Um, one part, which is actually the oldest part in the SDK and the most stable one, is how you define and work with points of interest. And that is what Pokemon, a Pokemon Go style app would do as well. Points of interest, I think the term is known. Yeah. Um, 
Points of interest are basically defined by two things. One is where is, the, where is this point of interest? And what do we want to have or the visualization of that? And in, in Wikidot SDK uh, API, those are geolocations and drawables that you put together through geo objects. Why do you have another element that puts it together? You can reuse um, labels. So like a little bit more practical example, how you build a Pokemon Go like AR app. As I said, Pokemon Go, I think everyone in here has seen Pokemon Go. An example, yes, no? Yes, it's very simple. Pokemon monsters relative to you, shown to you. So what we first need to have is where do these monsters appear? Where in a world coordinate is usually um, through um, positions and uh, GPS positions. What we want to use for the showing the Pokemons is what we call a relative location. So a relative location is, as it says, a location relative to the current position of the user. In this example, it's 12 meters south, 20 meters west, and 30 meters lower than the current altitude. For an absolute position, so if you wander around and walk around uh, the map and you encounter the monsters, you would obviously use absolute geolocations. You do this with an AR geolocation, the latitude, the longitude, and if you have an, an altitude parameter as well. The visualization part, quite easy, 3D model of the monster. You uh, have this AR model class um, where you can load a WT3 file what is a WT3 file? It's a proprietary 3D rendering format supported by Wikitude. You can quite easily transform nearly every FBX into the WT3 for format, which is then mobile optimized. So putting that together, no, not yet. Um, the WT3 format or the, and the API also support model animations. Um, in this case, there is an FBX defined um, animation, uh, hit animation which you can then trigger through the JavaScript API as well. And if we put that all together in the code, we create what we call a geo object, which consists, again, basically of those two parts. Where do we show what? The where is the location part. Oops, sorry. This location that we defined before. And then in the camera, we want to show an AR model. We can do a little bit more fancy stuff. We can control when the model is actually entering the field of view, so when it's entering the view of the user, and we also can react when it's again disappearing. Um, those are the callbacks on enter field of vision and on exit field of vision. Um, we can also show what we call position indicators uh, up, up here. Um, on the right-hand side, the blue arrow will always point to the shortest, nearest path of your object. Um, on the other, in, in the main uh, field, you see other points of interest, and you can control the visualization of those indicators as you'd like. Different example, same, same style, three points of interest for hotels with a um, augmentation or representation. Um, and the special thing here on top is this navigation bar, and that is a standard HTML part, uh, including JavaScript for filtering and searching, which you could run on every mobile uh, page as well. Um, you can combine that. Um, you have a running camera screen in the background, and on top of that, the web view where you can play static content. We call that head up information. And as I said, this is regular HTML, regular JavaScript APIs, uh, regular JavaScript libraries. If you want to do a little bit more fancy, even, you can add what we call a radar that comes pre packaged with the Wikidata SDK. You can see that on the bottom. So an element that shows you the points of interest mapped from a top a bird view. This is loud than how this would look like together. And if you want to make it even better, you then can include a, a, a screenshot uh, snap capturing through the Java API, but it's not scope of that. So all the functionality that you need to create for a Pokemon Go style app is actually already there in this SDK in the JavaScript API. The SDK offers more. It offers also image recognition parts and object recognition parts. Um, here's an example how uh, you would augment a catalog page, this gray page on the, on the top side um, that is defined as a, what we call a tracker. Um, as an overlay, we're defining this video overlay or this video drawable with a local um, 
or stored asset, the Howden's MP4 file, scaled to 65%. And then you're putting that together that every time this particular image is shown, you draw um, a video frame on top of that. As I promised, you will kind of return to this slide again um, and talk a little bit about the Plugins API. Um, the Plugins API is a part um, of the Wikid SDK that is probably not that used very often. If you want to extend the functionality of the Wikid SDK with your own <laughs> computer vision algorithms, your own libraries, then you need to have a way that we share the video frame with you. And that's exactly what the Plugins API is. The Plugins API will give you the ability that you create an own plugin for the Wikid SDK. Um, we share the frame the stand from the standard frame provider with your plugin and with frame, uh, just in regular image frame. We share that with you, you can work with that, and in case the Wikid SDK is recognizing something in this frame, we will also provide that information with you and share that with the plugin. So wh which image has been recognized, where is it? And you can see some code samples here how this is constructed. Um, particularly the recognized target, you will get a, both a projection matrix, you get a model view matrix. The second part, um, the custom frame provider, uh, at the top is probably our newest addition to that. We call it input plugins. <laughs> this allows you to, con to control the camera feed. So you can hook up a totally different camera feed um, to the Wikid SDK. Um, think of a remote camera stream. What would be typical applications? Um, one company that has applied that is actually here today. Um, I recommend to check out the endline booth. Um, through the Plugins API, we can integrate that engine into the Wikidata SDK and use AR and OCR together. Last, I'd like quickly to show you what we're working on next, um, and that is object recognition and tracking and a robust SLAM engine. And what you see there is are uh, the point clouds which, which we are tracking and the Wikidata eyeball on top of that. Come by our booth, check it out, and you will see the truck and other objects, how they are tracked and how the recognition of that is. Yeah, those are the practical problems then with this demo. So, Thank you a lot for your attention.